Hello, everybody. Welcome to another installment of Elephant in the Room. And yes, I can't talk tonight. Um, with us tonight, we have Deck Crash. Uh, I think most of you, well, more more than likely, would know um, who he is and what he does. Um, I'll let him get more into that later on. And tonight, what at least we're going to start with is is what does fundamentalism mean to us and just kind of play with it from there. So, Brandon, thanks for uh, joining us. How you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing pretty well. So I, I gotta ask, um, wh where does the the name Deck Rash come from? <laughs> it, it actually was um, it actually was a type of a card and a card game called Netrunner that I was into years ago back in my college days. It was like the t a type of um, a type of a, a program that you would use. It, it's a big cyberpunk type of game, and uh, the, it, there were different types of programs. One was called Deck. Crash, it would crash your computer deck, and so uh, I just kind of like this the way it sounded, and so I just started using it as a handle online, and I just kind of kept it from that that point on. Yeah, it's got a nice, nice flow, nice sound to it. Deck crash, I like that. Well, if you're, you know, you you did mention that you're you're having a headache, that you, you're having some problems with that, so you know, uh, just, I hope we can keep it nice and light and fun and. and not oh yeah, I'm good. Like I said. I yeah, I took some medicine for that, so I, I, like I said, I'm feeling a whole lot better. So, so I know that you're a fan of JP Holding. Yes, I am. And his one of his big focuses in the videos that he makes is Fundy Atheist. So, I'd like to ask you to start to when you hear the term Fundy just by itself, what does it mean to you? Well. I tend to go by what uh, what J.P. Holden kind of described it as. He actually did a video about what makes a fundy atheist, and right. But I don't just mean atheist. I mean the term fundy itself. Like, what does that mean? It means someone who ta who takes a very um, very hardline literalist approach to things. Uh, to you know, means what it says, um, and that's how uh, a lot of fundamentalists, and even fun you know Christians and even fundy, fundy atheists approach. Scripture and um, and doctrinal issues and such. It it means what it says. You know, it says right here in black and white that it means what it says. They don't fact. A lot of times they don't factor any kind of uh, of, of context. Or if they do, they really don't look at the entire context. They don't fa they don't factor in the uh, the cultural significance of what was written at the time, what the author was trying to say. For the particular situation, the language in which it was written, uh, etc., et um, because it, it's not that they don't understand that the Bible is a, is a complex uh, uh, compilation of books, but they often miss that point. Both a fundamentalist Christian and a fundy atheist will do the same thing. So that's the reason why many of them get. You know, get stumped when you have to explain to them what the language uh, meant at the time, what the situation was. This is the reason why you have a lot of fun. The atheists try to do that thing about, uh, you know, um, I'm pretty sure you've seen this meme tossed around. Like, it's oh yeah, well the well the uh, Old Testament says that you uh, that that you could ha it, you couldn't you know weave your clothes with two differing uh, types of threads. You know why do you not follow that? Not understanding that the Jewish law was three parts. One was the social law, there was a moral law, and one was ritual purity law, and that went under ritual purity, which was only for the Jews. You know. And so you see that they don't under they they sit there and just look at things in in, in a very black, in, in a very literalist approach. Okay, so if if I can try to define what because I I agree with what you're saying as as to quantify what fundy means. Um, if if I have to def define the characteristic that you're talking about, it's someone who is more reliant on doctrinal dogma as they interpret it and they are reluctant and in some cases even refuse to think critically about what they're saying they're accepting to be true. Does that sound right? Yeah, for the most part. Are they, are, you know, what will often happen is they tend to cherry pick as well. Um, in the church that I belong to, there was a lot of that that was supportive of the types of doctrines they believed in, you know. 
So uh, it, when, when you look back at how they interpreted it, it was either from a very literalistic approach to what the scripture said or oftentimes cherry picking. Well, um, negation grew up in Texas, and I grew up in Arkansas and Mississippi, mostly, and yeah, you're in Louisiana. We've got the trifecta here tonight. <laughs> we all have the South in common in, in one way or another. So how do you think the, the Southern culture, um, the economics, the the education, all of these factors of the culture of the South affect this boom of fundamentalism as we're defining it in the South? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe the South is just a region where that kind of, uh, where that kind of um, uh, religious um, mentality prospered, flourished. I think you have it. It, it, it's, it combines a, a lot of. Um, well, for one thing, of course, down in the South, we tend to value honesty extremely high. You know, to the point where a lot of people will tell. You know, will say that in the South, you know, the people are very polite, but you can also be, be um, uh, brutally honest. You know, when we when we want to be, uh, and also, um, but yet we will sort of sugarcoat it with politeness. Um, so. We do value, we have a high value on honesty and uh, and and t and hard work. We have a, we tend to have a very gra ground, very uh, gra I don't want to say grassroots. That's not the right word. Um, a very down to earth look uh, on life because in the South, you have a lot of people who uh, who grow grew up mostly on farms. Uh, still value hard labor, that kind of stuff is you know teaching people, but. It was, it, the South was also one of the places that was most resistant to, uh, to you know, uh, e mandatory education and things like that, where because a lot of people grew up on farms and people that was going to take away from our from our time, you know, to have to work on the farm and and such. So it feeds off of both the fervor and values of the of the region, I think, and also a mentality that kind of foments ignorance, and I'm not trying to say that Southerners are ignorant, because that would be, I, I'm a Southerner, and I know how many Southerners are not ignorant, but it can foment a mentality of ignorance, a, a mentality that, that doesn't look at the big picture, that tends to focus at things on a, on just a regional basis. That they a lot of people who live in the South tend to live their lives in the South, especially down here in Louisiana. A lot of people who live in Louisiana tend not to move too far away because it, you know things are very family family orientation. Also, I took a psychology class and the lady talked about that. Also very family oriented, and so they don't the apples don't tend to fall far from the tree. The uh, what what the family believed in tends to be what you believe in, and so it doesn't. It doesn't um, nurture a very uh, not forward thinking, but uh, doesn't nurture a lot of outside the box thinking. So I think that's one of the reasons why fundamentalist types of religions tended to stick because they don't require a hefty amount of thought. It tends to keep things simple and. That, like I said, it doesn't make us stupid or simple, but Southerners have a tendency to to keep it simple, and that and so I think that mixed with the culture tends to tends to uh, tends to bring about that kind of a of a mentality. You think that's right. more of a um, a, a cult cultural norm to where people want to remain that way, or do you think it's more? Uh, manipulated by um, oh the leadership. I mean, I would look at Texas specifically and the Board of Education and the things that they have not only done but tried to do throughout the years um, to you know, like you were saying, kind of keep it simple, keep it dumb. Um, doesn't seem like they really do value higher education um, for the most part. So, what are your thoughts there? Well, I can't really say much about Texas. I mean, though, I mean, I'm originally from Lake Charles, which is fairly close to Texas, barely like a 20-minute drive out. Yeah. Um, 
but uh, I know, like in Louisiana, we tend to be we well, South Louisiana is sort of the oddball of the South because rather well, the rest of the South is mainly Protestant. We're uh, mostly Catholic uh, because of the influx of the French and Cajun, um, uh, um, what you call um, immigrants and such. But um, yeah, the government. I don't know. The government is nothing if not a product of its own people. Seeing how we live in a representative democracy, and you have, you know, of course, your your your, your uh, representatives elected by the people. So it's sort of a circle. It's sort of circular there. You know, you have your representatives that are that have that kind of mentality. that voted for us of of a population that has that mentality. So their their uh their drive is going to be to keep that kind of status quo, and um, and 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 keep and uh, keep the mentality. We have a we and and because you live in the south, like I said, we have a tendency to to keep things as they are. We to not rock the boat. This is the reason why uh, back during the days of the civil rights movement, integration was so you know what was such an upheaval for the south because we tended to be the south tends to be very static and, and very resistant to change. And it was it was fifty kinds of hell for some uh, areas, you know, to, to accept that kind of change. Um, Louisiana, it was it, it wasn't quite as bad in Louisiana. That but that depends on where in Louisiana. There were some in, some incidents, uh, but Louisiana had a tendency to have some very weird laws in regards to uh, how blacks and whites interacted. But all that aside, what I'm trying to say is that. I think it just has to do with uh, the mentality of the people, which of course feeds the mentality of the government, which gives, which, which of course since tends to, uh, to, to, to facilitate the mentality of the people. So it's just a constant cycle. Okay. Thanks. Who do you think are the real leaders in the the, the culture of the South? Because it really is its own culture. Uh, who do you think are the leaders? Who do people look up to in the South that would be the trendsetters, be the ones that would uh, inform others on uh, the right answer to some questions, especially when it comes to what would be a philosophical issue or a religious issue? Oh, who do people defer to? Well, I most certainly think that it that it's both a combination of the political leaders and the religious leaders. In the South, uh, you have a, a much greater amount of mixing of church and state than you do maybe up north, or just the the U.S. in in general, uh, and also depending where in the South, depending on where in the South, there is a lot more uh, uh, tolerance for a for a political decision to be influenced by uh, religious attitudes, um, not, not tolerance, but much more of a tendency for political decisions to be influenced by religious attitudes, because it's such because it, it it permeates the the civilization down here. It's the reason why the South is so resistant to uh, changes that have been made very readily up north, same sex marriage, for instance. Well, I'd I'd like to tell our viewers because this is we're pre-recording this, but we'll be airing it live next Monday. I'd like to tell our viewers, if any of them are not familiar with you, because um, you have your own YouTube channel, and you're fairly outspoken on Facebook. I don't know what other uh, outlets of your your uh, philosophical and religious discussions do you have besides those two. Um, you want to plug something or... or Point someone to where they could um, get get in contact with you or hear what you have to say, because I, I know you're also a writer. I tend uh, to I tend to keep my Facebook uh, business private, except for people who I who I really highly trust. Uh, so, uh, but but as for my YouTube channel, it's 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 Dak Crash, and yeah, I talk about all kinds of stuff. I mean, I don't just talk about religious issues. I also talk about because I'm just a, I'm. A, Gigantic nerd. I talk about nerd things too, <laughs> and what? so yeah, you can find that out on my channel. I talk about movies, video games, uh, anime, that kind of stuff. And also, yeah, you're right. I am also a writer. I write science fiction and fantasy. It's D E C K R A S H, right? Right. To find you. All right. So I wanted to ask you um, because you have, from the discussions we've had, you you've done a lot of reading. You you've put a lot of thought into your theology. And I was going to say before that for anyone who's not familiar with you, you are a Christian, and 
I, I'm sure, considering how advanced, I guess it would be a good word, your theology is in relation to the norm, that if you ever get into conversations with people locally, whether it's at a church or your friends and family, that you get some pushback from the opinions that you you voice. And I was wondering if you uh, have any thoughts on that, like how it's gone, uh, whether you get any sort of a cultural pushback from, from the things that you say about your beliefs. Well, for people who are, who are, who are local, I, I don't really know because not a lot of people who are, who I know personally really seem to pay. Uh, I mean, not talking about personally. Uh, I'm talking about personally who live near me, who I know online, really watch a lot of my stuff. Um, and it's it's always been a really big irony. I'm the one who's like who who I guess seems to be more technologically minded. Uh, I don't even think my parents watch my videos. Uh, it, it, I mean, I talk about it, but then when I ask them, okay, you know, I did make a video on that, and they kind of give me this blank look. But then again, they're just not big uh, internet users. I don't think mine do either, so it's, it's all good. But um, as for uh, my friends, really just my online friends and the ones who will watch some of my videos. And then I have followers on my channel, but none of them I know. If I know them uh, in real life, they never mentioned it. Uh, so I was just assuming, by, by my question, I was assuming that you get into religious or philosophical discussions with people you know in your day-to-day -day life as opposed to just your YouTube channel oh yeah okay I do sometimes not as often as I do in, on the internet because on the internet of course a lot of people have ten more of a tendency to speak their mind about things uh, but the when I do get into a philosophical or, or a religious discussion with somebody in real life it doesn't last very long because they have a tendency to be very, very set in the way that they think. And oftentimes, uh, when they do give me their opinions and I'll ask them questions to kind of question their opinion, they tend to get angry very quickly. But then again, you know, the old saying in real life, the, the fastest way to, to make enemies out of people is talk about politics or religion. Uh, now, down here in, in the South, especially in Louisiana, politics is like one of our – how do they say in Louisiana, we only have two sports, football and politics. And uh, – and yeah, talking about talk about politics is pretty commonplace. You're not going to get on a person's bad side quite as quickly as you are uh, talking about religion. Uh, and then again, that depends on the person. But yeah, a lot of people when I talk when I get into religious discussions with them, they tend to be very very set in their ways, and so they won't readily talk about it. But when I talk to somebody on the internet about it, they'll they'll um, they're, they're they're like a faucet. They'll they'll speak their mind uh, quite a bit. Well, I I have to say I've been impressed with how you handle yourself around atheists. Um, it's it's we get used to the insulation of having this sort of a balance that we strike of being polite, but there being some level of disdain that's hidden just below the surface so that as people appear like they're they're calm and considerate and, and willing to listen to any perspective, but as soon as you challenge something that they think or something they believe, they'll often resort to um, sarcasm and, and needling because they, they don't really like being challenged underneath this veneer of uh, supposed rationality. It's, it's, it's rare to find somebody like you who, no matter what you're discussing or who with who, as long as the other person is willing to be thoughtful and, and uh, respectful to you, you'll be it right back no matter what you're talking about, what viewpoint someone is bringing up to you. And I've always admired that about you, uh, even with atheists. You're, you're like that, so I, I respect that about you. That's yeah, the one thing that I think that I've noticed more than anything, um, us being on the panel, you know, quite a few times on Lasoyo's show, Sunday Night Sinners and Saints, is that, you know, even though you know, a lot of times I may be the odd atheist out, so to speak, um, you know, you will still look at 
not only what I say but what anybody says and defend what you feel is true and not side with um, someone just because they have uh, like theological beliefs or physical, uh, <laughs> or anything else. God, I cannot talk tonight, guys. Um, and, you know, to me, that is the, you know, one of the, the most important attributes to someone who um, is really um, cares about finding truth. Um, it's not about where it comes from. It's about is it real or not. So that, that's why I've always liked being around you and being on the panels. Well, I, uh, in my younger days, I always had a lot of questions and, uh, and I, you know, me and my college friends used to discuss them, you know, and it, it required me to think outside the box of just my own religious, uh, upbringing, um, because I, I wanted to make sure that I was right more than just to say, you know, my church was right. Um, and I think it, when I start. I, a lot of doors opened for me at first when I when I learned when I took my my uh, my philosophy classes. Th those are the things that really changed my life. And uh, I took a philo especially when I took a philosophy of science and religion class, that really caused me to realize that I was looking at certain things all wrong. And though it was kind of a bit of a culture shock for me. Uh, because before that time, I was I was very much dyed in the wool, younger creationist, and all that. Now that's not the that's not the point of the show. I'm just trying to give an example of where I was coming from. And one of the no, things I think that's that's exactly the point of the show, is that you you have you were what we were just discussing. I I am assuming you were at one point what we're defining as a fundy, right? Yeah, pretty much. I, I mean, you brought yourself out of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually used to go into atheist chat rooms and kind of brave the vitriol to try, and I think really was because I, I liked the challenge and I wanted to see my my religious beliefs could hold up. And then I, looking back on it, I realized I was kind of just not really looking at certain things that they were telling me. But the thing about it is this: I uh, went to I went to uh, I took a I took a philosophy on science and religion class, and I read this book called God, Faith, and the New Millennium. Now I didn't agree with everything the book said. But they made some very interesting points and answered a lot of questions that I had concerning uh, things about God that I just didn't understand. Not only that, but also to, it was it was a it was a series of things. Later on in life, I read a book. Um, no, it wasn't a book. Excuse me. I had heard about Stand to Reason, which was a Christian apologetics site, and that's when I started realizing and understanding what apologetics was, and I started realizing that it did require listening to both sides of the issue, not just sitting there trying to find a defense for your uh, side of the issue, but also understanding, you know, what both sides thought, what were the strengths, what were the weaknesses. Um, and then, of course, uh, and then learning through, uh, I learned about Dr. William Lane Craig, and then I started, uh, and then me and uh, J.P. Holding, the guy you had mentioned earlier on, had started developing a rapport, and I started watching a lot of his videos, and he kind of helped me out now, and then re reading other books, in other words, which I still do. So when I do talk to atheists, if they're not these fundy atheists that act all closed-minded and arrogant, I'm able to actually hold a rapport with them so we can actually listen to each other. And, and I'm not perfect. I ha there are times where I do kind of, kind of lose my cool head, and I have, to, I have to keep myself in check. And fortunately, some of the folks that I do talk to understand that, and, and, uh, and because they get that way sometimes too. And we still have been able to um, maintain our maintain our uh, friendship o over that. And there's one guy who I had actually been talking to, and I'm not going to say it was stupid because of me, because this guy reads a lot, and he's actually been looking into stuff like that, and he's actually reconsidering uh, becoming a Christian. Um, and, and I've talked with him, and he's read a lot too, and I'm thankful that guy has an open mind. So just like I try to have an open mind about things. Well, I have two questions for you. Two questions. Uh, first... And I'll be I'll be happy to reciprocate. Um, I'd like to hear what you think is the least worst argument for atheism. So obviously, you don't find any of them convincing or, or persuasive, but what would you say is the least worst argument for atheism? You mean like least slash worst, or just the worst argument? 
Well, I don't want to say the best argument because you don't find them persuasive any more than I find Christian arguments persuasive. But there has to be one that makes a little bit more sense than the others and is not as bad as, obviously, you're, like I said, you're not persuaded by them, you're not convinced by them, but are there any that stand out that make a little more sense than the others? The only one that I've really heard that that makes the most sense, and even then, and really because I do have an answer for it, and the only thing about it that makes it uh, more uh, the, have the most sense is because the answer to it is not going to be very satisfactory, despite however true it may be. Is of course the argument from suffering, the uh, moral evil argument, and and actually even natural evil. Because it's a, excuse me, the answer to it is both very complex, it is both extremely complex and also kind of simple. But from when I when I think about it from the atheist perspective, I understand why that argument, the answer to the argument, may not be very satisfactory to them. And I think that that is that dynamic that you're talking about. It's not a rational thing. Right, it it hits you right in your empathy. Suffering does, and it's it's hard to intellectualize something like um, the Great Flood or um, why there are birth defects and babies are dying um, in the womb. You know that that sort of thing. That that's a hard thing to intellectualize when it comes to something like doctrines of sin and salvation. So yeah, I I would agree with you. That's that's a pretty it's a pretty hefty. Um, it's a it's a hefty topic to get into, and I, I can understand why that would strike anybody as really significant in the discussion. So that, that's a good answer. Um, the other question I wanted to ask you is if there are any questions that you have for atheism about I mean about atheism that you have either never gotten around to asking or never gotten a satisfactory answer to? Anything? Uh, really, the only times I would ever have questions like that is when I would sit there and try to talk to someone who was either borderline fundy atheist or all, or full-blown fundy atheist. And they, and oftentimes they tend to avoid the subjects, and these are questions that I would ask a, an actual more careful thinking atheist, more open atheist, uh, and they'd be able to actually think about the questions give answers to. So really, I don't, I guess really I, I, I ask questions as they, as they come up, because one of my one of the most common questions I would ask uh, whenever they, when I, I ask them, you know, why don't you believe there's a God? And of course, the most common answer they often get is not enough evidence. And I have to ask them, you know, what would you, what would you consider evidence? But then again, that's a question. Uh, I mean, what would you consider su su sufficient evidence? I mean, that's a question I ask all the time, or when I get a chance to. <laughs> they're not trying to obfuscate. Uh, but other than that, to really. I'm, I tend to be a person who takes things as they come rather than go in with a plan. <laughs> so, um, they, so, so I really can't say there's anything that I had never had wanted to ask, but never a I got to ask. So. Well, let's let's take this question that you just brought up about about the evidence. I, I think that that's a good. There's a good chunk there to to mull over because the the question itself. It, the answer that's usually given to it is malformed. And to say there's not enough evidence, it's that's a bad answer. Because it's not a question of there being evidence. Obviously, there is evidence for God. Obviously, there's evidence for that. It's just not persuasive to the atheist. They, they take the evidence that they're given, whether it's um, personal experience they hear from someone or the Bible, or intelligent design arguments, or whatever it may be, they take that as input that is technically evidence and decide that's not enough to convince me. So when someone says there's no evidence, what they usually mean, if they would put a little more thought into their answer, is I'm not convinced by the evidence I've been given.
but then right. you followed it up, which was exactly where it should go, is, well, what would be sufficient evidence to convince you? And again, I think we fall back on that problem of um, just basically dogmatism, even on the atheist side, where they're not thinking about the possibility of themselves being wrong or holding an irrational position. Yeah, that 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 is the problem I see in, in some atheists. They, what when when you get to the core of the whole issue, you ask them, "What would you consider evidence?" They basically you learned that they're holding them they're holding God to a standard that they know you'd never be able to achieve. That and it's an unfair standard. And I'm not saying all atheists are like this. I'm just saying many of the ones that I've talked to are like that. Hmm, that. That to me is interesting. And can you give us an example of what you're talking about as far as the standard that is unfair as far as God would be concerned? Yeah, well, you said a lot of, an unfair standard. Like, how do you define an unfair standard? Well, for for instance, a lot of a lot of atheists I talk to try to make it look like you know um, uh, quantifiable evidence, uh, you know, uh, like scientific evidence. Uh, and, and unfortunately, that's like asking, uh, how can I find plastic using this metal detector because they're asking a question which science is not going to be able to give an answer to because they don't factor in the limitations of science. The limitations of science, science only works for the physical world. But if the properties of God, uh, according to the Christian worldview, are to be believed, then you're not going to, you're not going to uh, see you're not going to be able to use a scientific method to quantify God's existence. Um, another one, uh, let me see if I can think about that. It, it all depends on what they, what they would put up. Um, oftentimes they'll, uh, they, it comes also from a, from a, a point of view that grew up from, that grew out of their former religious upbringing, especially since, uh, some, some atheists are former Christians. Um, that they that they had a, a a particular type of a doctrinal or or just a view that the their church had held that they didn't see that it worked out. For instance, um, that person that you that he had been that I had been talking to on that little thread, uh, that that you had started, uh, Matthew. I don't know if you read through everything that we had said, but she had popped up with that thing about uh how. Science shows that you know we evolved and all this kind of stuff. And I told her, you know, like you know, I'm not a young Earth creationist. And so a lot of uh, there's some atheists who I who grew up in a church that preached young Earth creationism, and they found all this stuff wrong with it, when they didn't realize that there are actually other uh, other sects of Christianity that do not adhere to young earth creationism. A lot of people don't realize Roman Catholicism does not adhere to young earth creationism. They actually have no problem with the theory of evolution. Um, and that, that's just one of a few things that I heard. Because it, like I said, they, they, their decisions are, their, I, their standards are, are, are set on a um, on an on a on a in, on an incorrect uh, doctrinal view that they never really looked that that uh that much into. What what bothers me the most about atheistic culture, and by that I mean um, this rising demographic of the population of people who um, claim atheism about theistic issues even if they just don't want to involve themselves with a religion and say I'm an atheist but they don't actually couldn't actually tell you anything about you know uh, original sin they could they couldn't explain any of the theistic concepts of what it is they're rejecting um, what what frustrates me the most about it isn't that they're not interested in learning about that, although I think it's always a good idea to try to learn about what you care about. Um, it's that there's this tendency to paint with a, a too wide of a brush that everyone who's religious, specifically everyone who's a Christian, is irrational in their beliefs. And I think that that's just a really bad argument because I don't think people are rational intrinsically. We are not rational creatures. 
we don't start out as rational. We have to learn how to be rational. So no matter how rational somebody thinks they're being in their thinking, in the way that they're looking at reality, they're never going to be perfect at it. They're always going to have some things that they're rational about and some things that they're not. So to just say that being a religious person or having religious beliefs is irrational, it's a really bad argument to have. Because the things that you care about, they strike a chord with you for reasons that, uh, in a lot of cases, rationality just doesn't enter into it. it it's like you, like you said, it's you're trying to find plastic with a metal detector. It's just not, it's a misapplication of the concept. The expectation is not realistic. So I don't, for, first of all, what I oppose is young earth creationism. I oppose harmful doctrines, harmful behavior. That's my standard of what I need to be fighting against in this discussion. I have no problem with someone just being a Christian because, as you just pointed out, there is such a, a wide array of what it means to be a Christian in terms of how your beliefs are going to manifest that it's not reasonable to just paint all Christians as the problem all of Christianity as the problem because that's that's like saying that greed is a problem well of course greed is something that you're going to disagree with but how is it manifesting right now that you actually need to do something about it start with the bankers that were involved with the the, the economic collapse in 2008. Start there. Find a point of someone doing something that's harmful. Focus on that. Otherwise, you're just you're you're basically saying all of this is a problem. I don't want to deal with it. So I'm just gonna say you know to hell with all of it. And that it's just intellectually lazy. So I, yeah. I think that that that's my issue with the way a lot of atheists approach Christianity. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I, I, that's one of the things I do have a problem with is intellectual laziness. I mean, I, I've lost count of how many atheists and skeptics that I've uh, that I've talked to that have that bring up this misunderstanding of uh, of of the Christian worldview of God. And despite the fact that you know there are many different sects of Christianity, the Christian worldview of God tends to be one of the things that for almost every sect of Christianity, it's almost uniform, since Scripture is pretty clear about it. Um, and, and though they, they miss, they, they, it's a mis, they do misrepresentations of the of the Christian worldview of God. And then I try to to tell them, okay, look, you know, you need to, you know, take a look at some of the stuff by this person. You know, this guy has some good uh, information about it. This person, and they just kind of tend to take it and throw it all in the trash. And thinking, oh, I don't need to hear that. It's just a bunch of Christian propaganda, you know. And and, and yet, they, whenever you try to, when you bring up the very arguments, they 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 uh they they bring up, they can't they they say nothing about it and try to change the subject and everything like that, or or don't bother talking about it, or try to just jump to more accusations, or or they just get especially angry and start resulting to character assassinations. Um. And I'm like, okay, you know, you're just intellectually lazy. <laughs> and that really does, that's one of the things, if, if there's anything about having to deal with some atheists that really would infuriate me, that's what it is, intellectual laziness. It's basically, you know, I'm ignorant about this. I don't care if I'm ignorant. I think that I'm right, and there's nothing you could do to convince me otherwise, and I just won't even look at anything that would try to convince me otherwise. Well, to, to be fair, boy, I, I think both sides of the coin... Um, yeah, it, it goes both ways. In fact, I think if if we're going to kind of paint with a broad brush, I think it's a lot more fair to say that the default position or what um, the average human being is tends to be intellectually lazy. Um, in fact, I've used this a lot of times um, with my students is that people are like electricity. They're going to find the p path of least resistance to get the greatest outcome every time. So people, I mean, again, this, this is going to come across sounding, oh, I guess a little more um, judgmental than it should, um, but based on what I've seen as both an educator and, uh, well, um, is that it just seems that 
you're going to run into the intellectually lazy people that are relying on what they heard from another person um, far more often than anyone that act, than anyone who has actually gone out there and done the work for themselves. And uh, on my side, it drives me just as nuts. I mean, I can't stand it. And I'm talking whoever I'm talking to about whatever the subject is. Um, so yeah, I I agree with that wholeheartedly. What you were saying, Brian, or that crash. It, uh, it doesn't matter if you call me either or. I should have said that. I, oh, hey, man, it kills me. It's okay. It's okay. I, I, every time, when I start my videos on YouTube, I just say, greetings, YouTube. This is Dad Crash, better known as Brandon. So I say both. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, I, I, I do agree. It does go both ways. I, I, I'm not trying to say that atheists are the only people who are like that. You, you, it's, there are a lot of Christians who are like that. Heck, a lot of my views on young earth creationism for better or for worse, actually stem from me watching Thunderfoot's videos originally. Um, that back before I realized how much of a jerk he is, but um, it, but he made a lot of sense, though. To be completely honest, he, he he despite the fact that he knows practically jack crap about uh, about religion, uh, he's actually very good with science. And his butting heads with Venom Fang X, I realized just how mistaken a lot of younger creationist views were. And so, um, and, and also how intellectually lazy some people really are, <laughs> and 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 so, uh, and 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 not just atheists, but Christians and theists as well. Why well, I, I I hate to interrupt you, um, but we've only got a few minutes left in the show, and I have one question, one more question I have to ask. I have to ask this. Um, I won't forgive myself if I don't ask this. What would you say to another Christian who, hearing your position in theology, example, towards young earth creationism, what would you say if they accused you of not being a Christian? And I'm sure this has happened before, but if you could give a blanket response to the people who would say, well, you're not a Christian because you don't believe like I do, what would you say? Um... I did, wasn't. I, I remember I was actually approached by that from someone extremely close to me. Actually, I'm not going to go into details about it because, on the odd chance the person might actually watch this video, I don't want that person to feel insulted or anything. And but I, unfortunately, I didn't get into a really deep discussion about it. I pretty much just said um, because this person had mentioned how another person in our church had gone had that was going like to another church and they're like, well, I don't think she has a Holy Ghost anymore and. And I was like, and I just basically said it would be a mistake to assume that just because that person goes to a different church that they're no longer, you know, it, it, they're no longer a, a Christian or are not, you know, are you to, to assume the state of their soul just because they go to a different church. Um, now, as for if a young earth creationist would say that, you know, if one to go into more detail, I would sit, I would first just simply ask them, is whether or not we evolved from apes or we uh, or we were created from literal dirt have anything to do with the state of our soul that that whether or not you know whether or not uh, we are going to still just as strongly believe in the death burial and resurrection of Christ for our sins does that have any effect on it at all and that younger creationist if he or she is intellectually honest in any capacity is going to say no and it says so, and then I would just say so. And if they were forced to say no, then I would say so. Why do you assume that I'm not a Christian just because I don't believe in, I don't believe that uh, that the story of Genesis is a literal story? That's not. And it, in, as a matter of fact, most Christian religions uh, don't consider that a doc, a necessary doctrine, a um, a fundamental doctrine. Uh, like the doctrines of the atonement and 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 uh, and, 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 and the doctrine of you know, death, burial, and resurrection, and everything like that, those are the very core essential doctrines of Christianity. Because without them, the whole thing falls apart. This is not one of them. Where we came from is not a, an essential doctrine. But so you know, I'm just saying, 
where does that factor into my, the state of my soul in regards to God? The answer is it doesn't. So I could be dead wrong, and I will freely admit I could be dead wrong. I just don't think I am, but I know that that has nothing to do with who I believe God is or, or, uh, or what he did for me. Well, it sounds like most of the aspects of Christianity that uh, the random atheist would say are harmful and dangerous in our society are things that you don't think necessarily have anything to do with um, the important aspects of Christianity anyway. And I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. And it, it just goes to show to me that there is a lot more to the, the, the concept of Christianity itself than someone who is intellectually lazy would grant. And if Christianity is going to continue to move forward as a significant part of our culture, then things like Young Earth Creationism will have to change because, as you so rightly said, it's not fundamental, to my understanding either, to what it means to be a Christian. It's more like worshipping the book instead of the concept of Christ. Would you agree with that? Yeah, um, I, I think I think that. Uh, well, I I'm not uh, I, I understand what you're trying to say, and I guess it's just saying worshiping the book. Of, the thing is that most Christians believe that the Bible is the 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 word of God. But the thing about it is, I see what you're talking about. You're they're more more uh, hard up on 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 taking what Scripture says and the, and how they view it in regards to. Uh, whether or not it's literally true or figuratively true over, yeah, the the issues that are of the most spiritual significance. So yeah, I do. I see what you're, where you're coming from, and yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. And and I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what you said there. That's actually, if it wasn't the first time, it's the first time I remember hearing that stance, which you know I I really like. I mean, I I think what you said there is um, very interesting, in that you know if it doesn't matter. If I did evolve, or if I was created, mankind, um, why are we fighting over this? Why don't we get to something that does matter? I I, I love that stance, um, and you know, but I think we're about running out of time, um, so we always want to give you know our guests the last word. So, um, you know, that crash, please uh, take us out. What would you like to finish with? Uh, just say, you know, if y'all are interested in uh, some of my views of religion uh, or issues uh, that are relevant to uh, Christianity and, and also questions about, you know, why we believe what we believe, you can check out my, uh, my, my YouTube page, uh, it's the, the um, channel, excuse me, the name is Dak Crash, D-E-C-K-R-A-S-H, and I'm hoping that some of y'all who may be looking for answers will find them. Yeah, and we would second that. I mean, I think we're both... Um, subscribe and we both um, value your stuff. I mean, we we want people to go over there. So hopefully they will. And uh, that's, that's all I've got. Good night, everybody. Yeah, it's it's been really great having you, man. Uh, no problem. We'll be back next week. Thanks, everybody. Later.